Hello, next episode of Sports and Songs here today. Today's season two, episode 16. Uh, today's March 13th, 2021. And we are your hosts, Dan and Andy. Andy, how are you doing this Saturday? I am good. Yourself? Not bad. Not bad. March Madness is going to be among us here uh, starting Sunday here, big time. You know, a uh, couple things on that before we get to the trivia, just some things I saw. Um, some schools have opted out of their conference tournaments, okay. but they're still eligible for the NCAA. So you got to have. How does that work? Uh, some of those conferences, they only get a team in if they win right. it, right? Okay. Yeah. But some of the bigger schools like Kansas and that are kind of banking on their, uh, and Virginia, I believe, was the other one. They're kind of hoping their record will stand for themselves. Yes. They don't want to be in the conference tournament and risk it. So that's going to say, no, nope, we're pulling out of the conference tournament. They're still eligible for at-large for the big one. At-large, yes. It, uh, so. Now, how about that? There's a, there's a Division I women's team in California, the Baptist School, that's undefeated right now. Yes. And uh, they're the only team that's undefeated. Uh, and they need to actually win or they're not going at all. They're in a smaller conference. So. And uh, this will be the first time since 1976 – that Duke and Kentucky will not be in the big tournament. Oh, really? That's a trivia question. Both Duke and Kentucky will not be in the men's big tournament. tournament. For the first time since 76. Because Duke pulled out of theirs because of a COVID-related case. Okay. And just because of that, that their record's not going to get him in anyway. So they're out. Wow. Kentucky is out. Now, I haven't heard Boo – if they're still doing an NIT tournament or not. I haven't heard anything about that. I haven't heard good, bad, or indifferent. So I'm assuming no. Um, but we'll find out tomorrow on the selection show, I guess. But Yeah, selection show for the men's is on Sunday. For the women's is Monday night. And um, things get busy after that. It's going to be fun. Now, spring training, Major League Baseball, we're coming on up this week. We'll be at the halfway point of the season. So. We'll touch on but, that. Yes. Before we get all too far into the spoiler alerts of the rest of the show, how about the trivia question? We'll start it trivia off. Trivia question is twins related. Ah. Trivia question mm -hmm. today is Ken Herbeck, famous twin, always, uh, for the most part, always wore jersey number 14. Now, he didn't wear it his first year. He wore number 26 because 14 was taken. Who was the name the twins player that wore mm -hmm. number 14? 14 prior to Kent Herbeck. That's the question for today. Go ahead, do your research, look it up, and we'll uh, answer it uh, at the end of the sports segment. All right. All right. I'm going to get in there. Um, one thing we're not doing this week or for the next couple of weeks is uh, teams because uh, state tournaments have started here. So we are starting here. Uh, the 2021 State Dance Tournament has started. Okay. Jazz was yesterday. And kick is today. So here's some of the jazz results. Um, you can also go to the state page and live stream all these events. You can go back and watch some of these if you want. Uh, so the state tournament, Jazz was yesterday. Here are the results. Class A champion, La Capara. The girls team picture right there. Um, one thing about this now for the for dance that's different a lot of schools is their dance team is the shadows. A lot of dance teams don't per se take the high school name for their dance team. So which is kind of makes them same but different. I kind of like that. It's a little different. So Lockapara champions right there. Uh Holy Family took third. Frazy fifth. Uh we go down here, class double A champion Sartell. And there's a Sartell Sabres girls team. Benilde St. Margaret, second, Orno, Mound West Tonka, St. Cloud Cathedral, and Simley. We move on to the A section, champion, Eastview, Apple Valley. And there's their lightning dance team uh, picture. Again, this is all for jazz. Kick is today. You can watch that. Uh, Minnesota State High School League, MSHL, whatever the initials are, .org. You can get uh, on their live stream and watch that if you like. More high school stuff. There they are, boys wrestling, starting up here. Um, let's see. Got the brackets 
right here. Give it a second. There we go. This is again from mshsl.org's site because I am not good enough to cut and paste all the stuff myself. Class A, here we go. Zambroda against GMLOS. Hey, Andy, what the hell is GMLOS? Funny you should ask. Grand Meadow, Leroy Ulster, Southland. So mm -hmm. there's a combined school for you there. They go against Zambroda. Uh, then Atwater and Kimball. Next bracket, Blue Earth and Kenya Wanamig. Jackson County and Minota, Long Prairie, Gray Eagle, Browerville, and Belgrade. West Central Area and Bertha Hewitt. Aiken High School and Royalton. And then Crookston and Badger Greenbush. If that's all your brackets for A, and then they go down the semifinals, and it's all today there. Again, all live streamable on the high school website if you'd like. Then there's our semifinals on the 27th at St. Michael Albertville the class, to crown the Class A champion. Double A, Simile and Lake City, South St. Paul, St. Paul, Humbert, Humboldt, Open World Learning. Scott West, there they are. Tri-City, Dawson Boyd, and Foaming. They were, uh, Scott West was ranked second in the section for the tournament. Watertown. Uh, was was first and um, was surprised to see that. Uh, yes, there was a very tough conference there. Becker against Das Cato, Fridley against Totino Grace, Foley Princeton, and then Pequot Lakes against Section Eight, which is Thief River Falls against Pequot Lakes are going at it today for that championship. So that would be uh, that's why there's a Section Eight listed right there. So then again, they go to the twenty second. Or 26th, I'm sorry, to St. Michael Albertville for the 2A title. 3A, Northfield and Albert Lee. Then New Prague against Shakopee. Hastings, Woodbury. Moundsview, Stillwater. St. Michael Albertville, the host school against Wyzetta. Waconia and Minnetonka. Hmm. Anoka Forest Lake. Then Bemidji and Wilmer. Round off the 3A. And then they'll go on there afterwards. Now, one thing you gotta remember here coming up, this is team individual week. So we'll get to that soon for them. Individuals a little different. They kind of everybody is there. Um, and I believe I don't have where that's gonna be at right now, but uh, that should be fun to watch. Always, always exciting to watch those kids go at it there um, for that. Coming up next, hit the wrong button, sorry. Girls High School Hockey is a couple weeks away, but we'll get into some of their standings and stuff we're doing here. For them. Their tournaments begin end of March. We're going to check out their rankings right now, courtesy of stateofhockey.com. They're not going to short anybody here. We'll start with boys hockey, though, Tuesday high school. Boys, uh, Nick Grove was number one. They've dropped. Lakeville South jumps up to three. I know there's been some concern. Minnetonka does still have a team. There they are at 12th. We were a little worried about them for a while. So there they are. Here's top 20. So they go 20 on this site. And boys A, uh, Gentry Academy has jumped to one. Hermantown goes to two. War World jumps up to three from six. So things are always popping around there at the in the class A. That's I always prefer the A tournament over the double A for boys hockey anyway. Um, first of all, I wish it had said hockey all in one class, but it's another argument for another day. Uh, Southwest Christian Richfield at eleven, up from sixteen. So there's that. Here we go. Girls double A. Like I said, their tournaments coming up end of March. Their sections will start soon. Andover, Edina, Minnetonka. The Middle St. Margaret, Hill, Murray are your top five. Stillwater at six, Rosso seven. Um, not much change up there. Uh, Minnetonka and Hill, Murray were tied at four, so it's a little jumbling there, but not too much. We'll see how it all pans out in section tournaments start. All those kids will play each other there. And in A for girls, War Road Gentry Academy up. There you see Chicago Lakes dropped from two to four. 
And uh, no real other big movers. Uh, Brock dropped it from 9 to 13. There we go. And then they got all their junior rankings. So if you're really into hockey, this site for stateofhockey.com has all your rankings for all the stuff going on. Up and down the dial for them. That's the wrestling one. Here we go. We'll continue on. Big Ten. A little straight in the college here. It's tournament time, so and just skip right on here. Boys back, or men's, sorry. College now, it's for men's. Men's basketball tournament. Gophers had their one win. Got our win. We were happy with it. Um, they did okay against Ohio State in that game. Um, a, it's at noon. Then Illinois and Iowa after that, and the plays tomorrow in the championship. Usually about five minutes after that championship game is when Selection Sunday starts. That's when uh, CBS will cut in with all their other stuff and everything else. So they go. Iowa was the three seed, Illinois two, Ohio State coming in at a five seed, and Michigan was the one. So there you go. That's all kind of panning out the way we all thought it would for them. For the boys, we go now to the women. We go now. There it is. Uh, Gophers did not fare well in that one, but that's okay. They uh, had a good season. We'll see how they do next year. Okay. Today, the championship, Maryland against Iowa. Monica Sasano from Watertown, Minnesota, and Iowa going up against Maryland for uh, Big Ten women's title. Iowa C was not ranked. Or, well, they were sixth, but you know they weren't in the top four where they got those buys. So they were the sixth going against Maryland, who was the one seed. That game today at 1 o'clock our time on ESPNU. I suppose if you went to one of those sites or you in this Big Ten uh, website, you can get the game online and watch that. Uh, before we go into college hockey. Who's the leading scorer for, for uh, Iowa? Leads the nation. I'm sorry? I'm sorry, the, what? The, the leading scorer for Iowa uh, is the oh. freshman, is leading the nation in points, I believe. What is her name? I uh, going by. I know who you're talking about. Okay. Good game to watch. Um, Yep. Uh, here we go. Boston College, local boy Drew Helson right there from Farmington. Went to Shattuck. Uh, plays Big East right now for Boston College. Uh, was drafted by Colorado last year. And as you can see, he was defensive player or defenseman of the year. One of them fought uh, for their awards. So congratulations to local boy there, Drew. Um, and yeah, he's a family member. Okay. We exchange Christmas cards. Um, that's not why I'm plugging, just plugging the local boys, what I'm plugging here. Um, so keep an eye on his name coming up. Uh, Boston College had four players get Big East awards. Uh, their goalie got an award. They're number one ranked going to the tournament. So keep an eye on them. Keep an eye on number four, local boy, Drew Helson. You can see him play there. Kind of sorry, I'm just going to see you all the time, but that's okay. All right, Big Ten, here we go for their hockey tournament. Their, rank, their uh, brackets, there's seven teams, Big Ten, and Notre Dame's in the Big Ten for hockey just because we didn't have enough schools and we felt bad for them. This is at Notre Dame's tournament is Wisconsin's the one seed. So tomorrow you see number four, Notre Dame against Penn State. Maybe at noon, these games are all on the Big Ten network. Gophers number two against Michigan State, then Michigan and Ohio State. And you see the brackets work down. Uh, the Gophers got two seed. I will scroll back up here slowly so no one gets nauseous. Boom, boom. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday are your games. Tuesday's championship, all on Big Ten Network for hockey fans. Follow up there, see how the Gophers do for that. We've got more fun college stuff. NCAA, or I'm sorry, WCHA men's tournament. Uh, best of three for the weekend. Uh, here's the result of Friday and the game for today. Sunday is our. Uh, if necessary games. Bemidji State with the win. Uh, Northern Michigan over Bowling Green. Bowling Green's the one seed, so that's a big upset right there. Uh, Lake Superior State over Huntsville, Alabama, or Alabama Huntsville, and then Minnesota State shutting out Fair State. So that Northern Michigan over Bowling Green, that's a big one. Bowling Green was one. That that one, Bowling Green fans are hoping goes three, obviously. <laughs> uh, Bemidji State, Michigan Tech was like the four or five game, so that's always a fun one to watch, too. So those, those are your games right there. 
uh, today and then Sunday if necessary, and these will all pool into the big the Big East tournament, the WCHA tournament, the Big Ten tournament, all bracket into the NCAA tournament following for, uh, hockey. Continuing on, move on here. We got this is the National Collegiate Hockey Championship. This is for the gals, the women's hockey. There's Northeastern at one against Robert Morris, two. These games are all in Pennsylvania at the Erie Insurance Arena there, you see. Uh, Minnesota Duluth, fifth seed against Colgate, four. Ohio State, the three seed against Boston College, six. Then you got Providence, Wisconsin. Yes, there's no Minnesota. We're still covering it. Wisconsin beat Minnesota in our um, areas stuff. That's how that worked out there. Ohio State's there, Minnesota Duluth. So we got some local teams we can follow. Um, just because the Gophers started like a ball of fire this year for the girls and just things just did not work out at the end. Better luck to them next year to the girls. Wish them the best. Um, again, this is for the women's NCAA – or I'm sorry, WCHA finals already done. This is the NCAA women's bracket. So this is their Frozen Four, they call it. This is their national championship. So good luck to those girls there. On to other teams not competing in – Here's just regular Gopher Sports. The rest of the Gopher teams, I'm getting all off GopherSports.com. Uh, we're not trying to push anything wrong or anything else here. Here we go. Saturday, there's sports today. Uh, Rowing's got swimming, diving, track and field, uh, indoor championships, track and field, and the diving. Championships, you can all watch that. You can see live results off the go for you can follow. Women's gymnastics doing very well this year at Illinois. Softball, Michigan State. You can watch that. There's a little link right there for you. Baseball, uh, Illinois, volleyball, Illinois. A lot of Illinois and Michigan States for us today. I, I think that's just dumb luck, though. Uh, softball, double headers. Baseball, Illinois. Baseball games are down at U.S. Bank. I don't know about tickets for that. Uh, you can always just check with the Gophers or U.S. Bank on tickets for that. And Sunday, softball, tennis season is here. There's Iowa and Indiana, women's, men's and women's. Um, softball again, down from Florida. Soccer season is starting. Then we got the game of Iowa. Then the men's hockey at Michigan State is part of the Big Ten tournament right there. You see that game. Uh, Monday, hockey semifinals. Hopefully we're playing. Uh, women will be in South Carolina for golf. That season has begun. And cross-country nationals are down in Oklahoma. Uh, Tuesday, more uh, national championships there for golf. Or, I mean, golf and hockey championships, I'm sorry. Uh, swimming and diving continues with their championships Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We we'll a little regular season game for soccer thrown in there for us. Wrestling national championships begin end of next week also. I know the Gophers have a lot of guys up for that, so keep an eye on them. We'll follow that up next week with how they've done. Volleyball, volleyball, Wisconsin, at Wisconsin. That's never fun. And then Friday next week, they see the swimming and diving championships, wrestling championships, um, men's tennis, women's tennis, and then the finals. And again, wrestling championships, you can always click here to watch, go to the Gopher Sports. Um, I don't know how much if Big Ten will have any on because it's the NCAA. If they'll just show Gopher highlights or Big Ten team highlights, how they will do that this year. But there you go if you're interested in that. The Michigan State fans, we have not forgotten about you your calendar for the next couple, or for the next week for the sport. Uh, hockey this weekend, Michigan Tech, we won't need that game Sunday. We'll win it today. Uh, the next weekend tournament, softball at Oklahoma, softball Rogers State, and then uh, baseball Minnesota State next weekend along with softball. So that's Bemidji State. Uh, track and field in a couple weeks get started for you guys also. Bison football or bison sports in general. We'll go here. There we go. Go bison.com for all their sports. See what they got going on. Um, pretty neat site. I, I like it a lot. So here we go. Saturday, softball, baseball, both at Dayton, Ohio, or against Dayton. Uh, in Ohio. Football. Did I pass the football one already? There we go. Illinois State at the Fargo Dome. 
uh, Bison Radio Network, live video feeds here off their site. Um, if you have ESPN Plus, you can go there and watch it too. Uh, and then we go, there's some more softball, women's volleyball against Omaha, and the, again, the NCAA track and field. They're part of that also. There you go, tomorrow, 2 o'clock. And I, I don't care. North Dakota is always going to be the Sioux to me, so you're going against the Sioux in soccer. I don't care what the little eagle name is. You're the Sioux. Um, Monday, golf at the BYU Classic and men's golf down in Phoenix. So – uh, I hear they got snow down in Arizona this weekend too, so sure glad the boys from North Dakota are down there in snow. They appreciate that, I bet. Uh, then we're going to do more golf and baseball for the Bison coming up, softball against Missouri. And then you go see Bison are also part of the NCAA Wrestling Championships. So you can follow them there too on their site if you want for live stats to follow them more closely. Uh, then baseball next weekend for them and softball, the girls. Women's volleyball at Denver. That's what we got for buys and stuff there. Um, other things that I got really, Major League Baseball. And I th hear the Saints are part of this too. Uh, rules, not changes, things they want to try out. Uh, larger bases to reduce collisions. Limit defensive shifts requiring four players on the boundaries of the infield dirt. And requiring pitchers to step off before they throw to a base. Now, okay. Here's my opinion on the whole shift aspect. I'll just use David Ortiz, for example. They put everybody and their brother on the one side of the infield because Ortiz pulled the ball and there's no tomorrow. David Ortiz, Hall of Fame player, not going to get into that argument right now. But learn to hit the opposite way, man. You're a pro. The shift should not – they shouldn't have to have a shift. You have the two on the left, two on the right, because you're a major league ball hitter. You should hit, be able to hit the ball. You should be able to hit, hit it within a uh, hula hoop, wherever you want on the field. But if you've got to go opposite field, you should go opposite field. You break your wrists, you don't break your wrists. It's, it's simple. Um, that just really blows me away what the shift is. These guys all shift to one side. You're professional hitters. Butt down the third baseline if they're all on the one side of the field or the opposite field. Do, do what you got to do to get on base. I, I'm not a fan of the shift. How about you? I'm Sam. I agree. Yeah, I mean, you're a professional. They, they don't put a shift on for you. Do you guys do the shift a lot in your league? No. Because you're all no. – you, you don't see it too often, but even with Ortiz, if you drop a bunt down or push something down the line, even once, even if you get out, they're going to not know what to do the next time potentially. So. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know – I can see the outfield shift. I'll give you that one a little more because there you're kind of playing with fly balls and wins. So I'll give you a little bit of leeway on the outfield, maybe fading a little once. But you never see the left fielder basically playing center field and everybody else over on the right side. You never see that bad in the outfield. But I could see the outfield then moving around a little bit because of wind and that will give them that. But I'm not a fan of the big uh, shift to Rooney there for Major League Baseball. Um, NASCAR coming up this weekend – uh, Phoenix Raceway, 312 laps, 312 miles, the Instacart 500. Um, yeah, Kyle Larson, William Byron, Christopher Bell, and Michael McDowell have already won. So they're, if the playoffs were today, they're in already. Uh, Chase Elliott, the defending champion, would be seventh going into it right now. Kyle Busch would make it. Uh, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. and Alex Bowman are the first two out of the race or out of the playoffs if they were today. Got plenty of time. Boys, let's not get excited about that. Um, so don't worry about your favorite race car driver not making it there. They're fine. Um, New York Mets news, not much. DeGrom's been doing very well. Everybody's doing good down there. Everybody's staying healthy. No one's uh, – Pull the muscle. No one's got COVID. No one's got a dumb ear hangnail where they're out for a few days or something like that. You know, sometimes you hear pitchers do that. Pitchers keep their nails short unless they're a knuckleballer. And sometimes they get a hangnail or something. They miss a start. Nothing like that yet, which is scaring me a little bit. Let's get all these dumb little injuries out of the way now for the first week of the season. Get them out of the way. Um, I've seen a lot of picks for the National League. Uh the Mets are the fifth favorite in the National League to win it. You wouldn't know that by listening to me. I mean, yes, whatever. <laughs> um, but you can't count out the Braves. 
You can't cut out. I mean, the Padres, Padres on paper should be a really good team this year. They did decent last year. Um, I, okay, I'm going to say it. I'm putting the Padres and the Mets in the same boat. They're both on paper should be very competitive. But this is why we play the games. Mm-hmm. You know, someone gets injured. Someone who's not supposed to get hot gets hot and helps move up a team like, you know, whoever. I'm going to blame. The Arizona down my backs get two guys who just go hot out of nowhere, and now all of a sudden they're contenders. You know, they get a pitcher that gets smoking hot, and they're in it. And someone for the Dodgers gets hurt. Geez, funny that Diamondbacks are now contenders for the title. This is why we play the games. This is why we play 162 of them. Uh, Mets should win their division, I think. Atlanta's going to be tough. I don't trust Washington. You never know what you're going to get with them. I mean, I've seen different reports from them being winning the division to being fourth. So I don't know what to expect there. Should be a fun year as baseball. Um, how is the minor leagues going so far, sir? Um, the minor, uh, spring training. For spring training leagues, I'm sorry. So for spring training here, <clears throat> what we've got, the, uh, like I said earlier, the season's going to be uh, halfway down here early next week. And, uh, and on actually Thursday of next week is the, uh, the two-week countdown for the opening day for Major League Baseball, uh, the regular season. So it's going to go quick. Right now... In the Cactus League, the Kansas City Royals are the best team in the Cactus League. Grapefruit League is the Miami Marlins. Marlins lead the league uh, so far. And like I said, we're about uh, coming up on the halfway mark. Um, Twins open uh, at Milwaukee Brewers for, for Minnesota Twins baseball. But when they come home, Target Field has announced they are going to uh, limit fans up to 10,000, 10,000 fans uh, uh, when they first start. So they'll have people there. The target field holds 43,000 fans, I believe. So 10,000 will be enough to get things going when they start. Uh, their first two series they play at target field are all day games. Um, the first one's a weekend where that makes sense. But then the Boston Red Sox come to town for four straight days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, all afternoon games. So Looking forward to that. I like the afternoon games in April. Now, an interesting note for Twins fans. Uh, we've got a lot in common with the Detroit Tigers. Uh, up to four former Twins will be on the Detroit Tigers opening day roster, potentially. They've got second baseman Jonathan Scope. They've got left fielder Robbie Grossman. They've got utility infielder Nico Goodrum, who was a Twins prospect back in the day until uh, they cut him loose. Now he's uh, major league roster with the Tigers. And then due to, I think it was a rule five uh, acquisition, Twins lost outfielder Akil Badu. Akil Badu was drafted a couple of years ago. Very good outfielder. He lost him on some kind of a compensation draft. Detroit picked him up and he's got a very good chance to make the opening day roster uh, for the Detroit Tigers as an extra extra outfielder. Are you there, Andy? Hello? So that's the that's the Detroit nice. that's the Detroit Tigers. A lot, of, lot in common with the Twins. A lot of former Twins on that team. And in the fact, in the past, they also had the Ron Gardenhire coaching, managing there, along with a bunch of the assistant coaches. But those are all gone. Now they've got new fresh blood in there as management. Um, going back to hockey, women's hockey, local connection for women's college hockey. Providence is in the uh, final tournament. Local connection there. Uh, Minnetonka grad Annalise Rice is a senior on that Providence Friars team, if you want to follow them in hockey hockey tournament um all right that's all i've got you want to go uh trivia trivia answer before you could do that i uh, did some research there leading score for women's division one basketball from iowa is clayton clark oh yeah so so clark is a freshman, a freshman guard 
and she's up for player of the year and point guard, I think, of the year as well, along with uh, Paige Beckers. So a lot of local, um, you know, she's Iowa. Paige Beckers from Hopkins, uh, top two guards in the yep. country as freshman right now. Yeah, yeah but uh, trivia answer, sir, before we get to the music part. I got some music notes here, but uh, let's get the answer first. The answer for the trivia trivia question is, Kent Herbeck, longtime Twins, wore number 14 for the Twins. Uh, his first season up as a rookie, incidentally, he wore number 26. 14 wasn't available. The question is, who wore number 14 for the Twins prior to Kent Herbeck? The answer is first baseman Pete McCannon. Pete McCannon was the last person to wear number 14 before Kent Herbeck had it for, for many years. So trivia question there, Kent Herbeck. While I was doing the research for this, Andy, I found out uh, what Gary Gaetti's number was when he first came up with the Twins. He wore eight, long time eight. number eight. Yeah. So when he first came up one season, he wore 39. Oh, wow. I, I was busy doing the research there for the Pete McCannon story, and I saw an old image of Gary Gaetti as a rookie twin wearing number 39 um, for the Twins. So that's all I've got for sports. Well, well, speaking of uniform numbers, that's kind of happened with Carson Wentz going to uh, the Colts. What does he know? He asked for number 11, and some receiver there said, no, I wear 11. you, you got to find something else. Yeah. I, I'm sure someone's charity is going to get a nice check written from Carson Wentz to get that number. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's interesting what they do, how important and superstitious they are with their, uh, with their numbers. Right. All right, I got some. Scare music, music wise, notes, concert notes. Yeah, come here. Um, tribute to the 80s Rock Hollywood Boulevard will be June 19th at the Doghouse in Maplewood. Um, uh, you can also find that on our Facebook page. Um, another couple notes here albums, album coming out. It's a re release, Richard Pryor's comedy album. They're re releasing that one. There's a classic Richard Pryor comedy album being re released. Nice. And now, a couple weeks ago, if you recall, I mentioned this album coming out. Alice Cooper, Detroit Stories, his new album coming out. Go back in the archives two weeks ago, Andy said, Alice Cooper's new album's coming out. It should be cool. I looked at Billboard's Hot 100 this week for album sales. Number one, Alice Cooper, Detroit Stories. Wow. Let's call us your music news breaking leaders right here. All that we have, plus we have to review that one. <clears throat> that's all we do is just give. We're just two weeks ahead of the rest of society, so just. And we're very educational too. We're always providing mm -hmm. up, updates on things. You hear it now, then you're gonna hear it nationally in a couple of weeks. So, but that's what I got, sir. What do you got in the uh, in the Sony Walkman this week? The Walkman this week is the review from a band called the Black Crows. Shake Your Money Maker, 1990. I'll bring it up here. Bring up the band. Shake Your yeah. Money Maker uh, is the debut studio album by American rock band, The Black Crows. Released February 1990, it's the only album the band to feature guitarist Jeff Cease. The album is named after a classic blues song written by No More James called Shake Your Money Maker. The Black Crows have played that song live many times over the years, but it's not included on this album. Shake Your Moneymaker peaked at number four on the Billboard 200, and in two of its singles reached number one on the mainstream rock track chart. Uh, one is Hard to Handle, another two is She Talks to Angels. Now, She Talks to Angels had a riff written by uh, Rich Who's a guitarist? Rich Robinson, right? Yep. <clears throat> Rich Robinson wrote that as a 17-year-old high school student who wrote that riff for See She Talks to Angels. And Chris Robinson, the brother, lead singer, wrote the lyrics to that were inspired by a heroin-addicted girl that he kind of knew. Kind of knew, it says. Uh, heroin-addicted. Kind of knew. Um... Uh, and, and then Jealous Again and Twice as Hard and Seeing Things were also charting in the United States. Uh, Shake Your Moneymaker went five times platinum, the band's best-selling album. 
The entire album le length is 43 minutes, 42 seconds. It's considered Southern rock, blues rock, hard rock, and rock and roll. The brothers, Chris and Rich Robinson, formed the band, and they called it Mr. Crow's Garden. 1984, they formed it. Uh, their producer, George Dr uh, Drac Dracolius, saw the band perform, signed them, and then had them name, uh, they changed the name to the Black Crows. The recording sessions began in the summer of 1989 in Atlanta, and then they also moved and did some of them in Los Angeles. Some of the early songs, um, including She Talks to Angels and Could I've Could I Been So Blind, were actually songs that they performed when they were known as Mr. Crow's Garden. The band also chose to record a cover song. Hard to Handle was a cover song by Otis Redding. Actually proved to be their breakthrough single. It was an Otis Redding song. Four mu music videos, Twice as Hard, Jealous Again, Hard to Handle, and She Talks to Angels were filmed to promote the band and the album uh, subsequently airing on MTV. Here's a track listing. Track one, Twice as Hard. Song two, Jealous Again. Song three, Sister Luck. Song four, that old one, Could I Have Been So Blind. Five is Seeing Things. Song six is Hard to Handle. Song seven, Thick and Thin. Song eight, She Talks to Angels. Song nine, The Struttin' Blues. Song 10, Stare It Cold. And song 11 was a, uh, was a hidden track called Live Too Fast Blues and Mercy Sweet Moan was a hidden track, only a minute, 17 seconds long. Uh, here's the personnel. Chris Robinson, vocals. Rich Robinson on guitar. John Cease, once again, on guitar. That was the only album that he was on playing lead guitar. Bass was done by Johnny Colt. Drums, Steve Gorman, Steve Gorman. And when the album came out in February 1990, Critical reception was mostly favorable. Rolling Stone gave them a three out of five stars. Called them the best new American band. The band also appeared on the cover of Rolling Stone's May 1991 issue. Um, they were in the, they were fired from a ZZ Top's tour in 1991 in March. Uh, but some, some have, uh, have gone on to say that compared to bands like 70s acts, uh, journalist David Fricke basically s said they sounded a lot like Faces, the Rolling Stones, and even Aerosmith. Some praise no. Rich Robinson's guitar playing and Chris, and Chris Robinson's appropriate vocal swagger and gave it a B-plus in Entertainment Weekly. But the Black Crows... Are to, the, are to the early ro ro Rolling Stones as Christian Slater is to young Jack Nicholson. This was a quote. Um, kind of saying, it, it mentioned it was a self-conscious imitation, but fine in its own right. So they said they're kind of imitating these other bands. Um, Rolling Stones also said that, uh, sorry, Entertainment Weekly said that authentic bluesmen, the blue Black Crows are not and they will never be. But their sheer energy earns them a right to trash it up. So uh, they sold five million albums. The singles they released was Jealous Again. Then they released Hard to Handle. Following that was Twice as Hard. They released She Talks to Angels. All these were in 1990. Uh, they released four singles in 1990. And then in the beginning of 1991, the song Seeing Things was released. So they released five, five singles on that album. Pretty good. If you listen to them, most of those songs are good. It's got a bluesy feel. Once again, they're at Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, yeah, Southern rock blues, I call it, yeah. Southern rock blues. Uh, Chris Robinson, good on vocals. I didn't know how talented Rich Robinson was on guitar. He was mentioned in one place as a top 50 guitar players. Really good. He's, he is a... Uh, very good, and for what I've read and studied, or not studied, read and researched for him, 
He's very good, and he'll be one of the first to tell you that he is. Um, which I guess if I was talented too, I'd tell you I was talented. Um, that was kind of their downfall, but though they they didn't work with the media very well, I don't think. Yeah, they were popular on MTV with their videos, but man, you didn't see a lot of other stuff from them commercially. Um, they didn't do a lot of. Uh, not saying they weren't ever on Letterman or Carson or stuff like that, but you didn't see them doing that stuff a lot. Uh, Chris Robinson was kind of a had substance abuse issues, like most lead singers. Um, I kind of compare musically to uh, Georgia Satellites a little bit. That Southern blues rock, kind of on their kind of their own in a way. You know, in your story, you said they were compared to like the Stones, and I never, I didn't hear that in them. I, I, I personally didn't. Not saying that guy was wrong. I didn't hear it. I heard him more being more like a, a uh, like the Georgia Satellites or a little bit of um, uh, uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan and his brother Jimmy Vaughan. Um, that type of genre of music, the blues, southern rock, blues stuff. Um, and I, I liked Black Crows. I thought they were all right. They were decent. Um, their version of hard to handle, me being a growing up in old school, didn't like it. It was way yes, you don't you don't copy exactly, you kinda of put your own twist out, which I did. But I liked Otis's version so much better. It was kinda of like hard to hear someone else do his song. You know, there are other songs that I like. Talk to Angels, I thought it was a great song. I really do like that song. Um Hard to Handle, I kind of had a personal issue with because I'm a big Otis guy. So. Um but I thought they were a good band. That I I don't know what really if they had issues with record labels, why they just kind of had their first two and that was it. Sales weren't there. I don't know what, what stopped them from going on, but I thought they were okay. Yeah, um, Chris, Chris Robinson uh, was married at one time to Kate Hudson for, for about seven, That's years, right. seven so, years yeah. when they were very, very popular. Uh, but Rich, Rich Robinson, very good, uh, was known for, I guess, playing the uh, more of an open, open G uh, set on his guitars was he stayed very much with that very uh fluid sounding and he always played gibson guitars in fact he had a, mm -hmm. a black falcon and then uh recently i looked him up he received a homemade white falcon guitar uh, oh okay a custom made that was just uh, i don't know a couple years ago i watched it on youtube uh, a custom made white falcon gibson guitar so he was very good with those uh, very good sound uh very good sound, but Rich Robinson, very good guitarist. I didn't didn't know he was that talented, but very good stuff. Yeah, he he's really good. Kind of reminds me of the guy from um, a lot of bands out there that, that just the guitarist is really good, real fast, and then they kind of get stuck on themselves a little. I don't know if that hurt them with media relations on stuff or record label re relations. I thought they were really good. I'm surprised they didn't do more, or they haven't come out with other albums since. Um, I'm sure he, I hate to say he influenced people because they weren't around for long, but inspired maybe is a better word. He inspired a lot of guitarists, I think. There's a lot of rock around that time, like you and I both said, right? Tom Kiefer from Cinderella had a lot of blues mixed in with his. Yeah. Uh, you hear Mick Mars was a big blues guy, Mick Mars from Motley Crue, a big blues guy. So kind of had some of that twist in some of his stuff. You had to mix in some blues stuff with that. So you hear that a lot of that in music, that genre. and Black Crows focus more on the blues part of it than those other two artists did. Yeah, this album came out 31 years ago. Wow. Yeah, thanks for making me feel bad. Long time, long time. Um, keep, keep following also our uh, midweek. I'm doing some midweek baseball. Andy, you're doing some midweek episodes as well. You can find those on our yes. YouTube, Instagram channels. And, and always leave uh, comments. Uh, yeah, Dan's going to have one. Yours would be Wednesdays, baseball, Minnesota, or baseball in general, Wednesdays. Baseball, Wednesday uh, midweek bonus episodes. I did one on amateur baseball, the history of amateur baseball in Minnesota. Very interesting. Uh, I learned a lot while doing that research, and that, that's out there. It's just a seven-minute quick quick episode. Yeah, that's what our midweek ones are be. Mine's be something on Tuesdays called Page 2, Sports and Songs, Page 2. A little more in-depth on some of these stories we had, or maybe a story we didn't talk about today. I'll cover there. Um, Maybe a, a special episode of a person of the week or a soapbox issue or something. It'll be a little page two type stuff. Um, again, 
five to 15 minutes long, nothing earth shattering. Be on Instagram and YouTube on those. Awesome. That's all we got for the, uh, this week. Uh, today is March 13th. Thanks for listening and uh, have a good week. All right. Talk to you later. See ya.